Hey everybody, how y'all doing? This is Pill Talk with Dr. Barb 2. I got a special guest here with me today, Daphne Glenn, the author, speaker, advocate, you know? Um, Daphne, how you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. So let us know some let us know about you. Tell us your background. All right. Um, so like you said, my name is Daphne Glenn, and I am an author and a speaker here in Greenville, South Carolina. Um, I'm originally born in Greenville, South Carolina, um, and kind of had a difficult upbringing, but by God's grace, I made it through on the other side. Um, went to um, undergrad, I went to USC Upstate in Spartanburg, and I ended up getting my master's degree at Columbia College in Columbia. Um, throughout my time, I've always realized that I have had a um, gift for helping others. Um, so I have decided that, you know, I want to make sure, make it my mission to um, help kids and help the youth. So I'm currently working in higher education right now and working with a college access program that helps high school teens get to college. So everything education and literacy. That's dope. That's dope. So with all that, you're helping the kids, you end education. And I guess that made it easy for you to go ahead and write your first book, Brown Boy. Can you tell us about that book, Brown Boy? Yeah, so Brown Boy, my first book, I had so many thoughts way back when. Um, having, being a person who enjoys kids, being someone who enjoys um, making sure others know about themselves. I was a very curious kid, you know, wanted to make sure that I, um, as a kid, um, you know, just kind of think about myself and others in the grand scheme of things. And as you know, in the past 10 years or so, there have been a lot of things that have been affecting kids, whether they be brown or not. And I was very caught off guard by all the things that were going on in the world. And my nephew at the time when I first wrote the book was very, very young. I think he may have been like two. And I knew that I could have an impact on his life, but also the lives of others. So I took it my, I took all of the knowledge. I did a lot of research, did a lot of like thinking about how I would want to um, receive the information and ended up writing some books. Um, the story itself is about a boy his mother has a conversation with him, a very, very important conversation with him um, about his livelihood and about who he is as a brown person in society. So very, very um, touching book. And um, I hope that it does make a lot of difference in kids' lives today. All right. Let's not just run past some of those events that was happening in the world when you wrote this book. So when you say some events that was going on in the world, what uh, um, what events are you really talking about? Yeah, um, so if anyone searches for my book, um, it's available on Amazon. It's available on my website, DaphneGlenn.com. When you get access to that book, um, you'll see on the front cover, there's a little boy and he has on a hoodie on his head. He has a hoodie on and he has a backpack with Skittles in his pocket. So um, I was very intentional about making sure that we allowed um, Trayvon Martin to live on and to me rise and just some of the boys and men who didn't get the opportunity to, um, you know, live out long and full lives. I made sure that I did what I could to write about their experiences and their stories. So in this book, you'll see page after page, you'll see some connections between um, boys and young men who have been um, wrongfully killed um, in America today. Oh, dope, dope. That's a real deep message in there. Um, so I see you got another book up there too, Brown Girl. Yes, yeah. right there. Uh, <laughs> give us uh, some inf information on Brown Girl. What's that about? Yeah, well, I couldn't leave the girls out. I knew that this was an experience that brown boys were going through. So on the flip side, I was like, hey, maybe I should also think about brown girls. Um, a lot of brown girls deal with a lot of different things. Um, a lot of us have to grow up quickly and we have to um, deal with some things as far as our self-worth and love. And I wanted to make sure that girls knew that it was completely okay to have big hair, 
to have larger facial features to be different. And this book is a story about um, a father and a daughter. And she is um, going through a lot of life changes. Even as a young girl, she's trying to figure out who she is. And so in this book, um, Daddy comes in and a few extra characters come in and talk to her a little bit about who she is and um, how she is represented in the world today. So very similar stories, um, but just different aspects that kids, um, brown kids in general, are going through. Oh, that's dope. So these are some very powerful and empowering books that you got here. So the brown boy, who are you talking about? Um, is dealing with more of injustice that's going on in the world and his mother is guiding him, letting him know that, hey, as a brown boy, there's certain privileges, let's say, that you won't be able to have at being being born a, a minority, such as, like you said, with the hoodie and Skittles um, um, going out and about and people judging you off of what they see. So always got to be cognizant of how you carry yourself and present yourself. Is that the, the message that you've given out with Brown Boy? Yeah, it absolutely is. I think that there are a lot of conversations. So um, I coined myself as a conversation starter for kids. And um, shout out to you. You kind of helped me process that and put that through. Um, but yeah, so starting the conversation. So parents and educators alike are able to use this book to start conversations in their household, start conversations in their classroom. There's a lot of things that are going on and I feel that parents, educators, um, teachers, everyone, there may be some tough topics that people just don't wanna bring up and they wanna, don't wanna have conversations about it. They wanna wait until a kid gets older enough to understand, but as we can see that these things are affecting them at a very, very um, young age and so, kids are seeing this on the news they may be um, having conversations with friends um, so it's you know a right time to start these conversations now so that kids are well aware of how they proceed in society and um, how they can just move forward with and with all the things that are going on how they can be able um, to move forward but yeah so the stories pretty much talk a little bit about you know the injustices that are going on in the world and how to look at yourself and how to help other people, um, whether even if you're black or you're not black, you know, becoming good advocates in the world for other people and how to um, just overall, you know, make the world a better place with um, the information that you're given. Dope, dope. Um, so Brown Girl, which um, what you just told us. So I feel like with that story, you're telling Brown Girls and little black girls and minority girls that, hey, you're beautiful no matter what. Like the features that God give you, um, like they're beautiful, like with the big lips or the big hair or anything like that. It's like, okay, always be proud of yourself. Be, um, be able to see yourself in other um, black women that's doing major things like Michelle Obama. So when you look at her, you'll be like, okay, She's the first lady, so I can see myself being a first lady. Is that some of the messages that coming out of that book? Yeah, and the cool thing about it is that um, it does have some, some featured um, individuals in the book. So if you have the opportunity to copy, you will see this. Um, my illustrator, mm -hmm. Shauna Williams, did a really, really amazing job with making sure that the illustrations um, pop off the page, they come to life, and that kids are able to see themselves, and it looks as realistic as possible for kids to be able to see. So in this book, yeah, the kids are able to um, know that just because your features look a little bit different than someone else, just because your hair looks a little bit different from someone else, your height, um, all those things really don't matter. You know, you were made unique and no one else is gonna have those same things as you. And that's completely okay. A lot of girls have to, um, that I'm seeing nowadays are, you know, having to deal with a lot of different things. And it's comforting for parents to know that they have a book like this that they can use to um, help combat some of those early thoughts that they may have. They may look at a lot of things in the media to tell them how they should look and what they should wear and things of that nature. Um, but it's good to have literature um, such as books in the, the home or in the classroom 
to kind of help with some of that. So, so basically, Brown Girl is a, a book I feel like gives girls self confidence. Would you say that? Absolutely. Um, I have used this book multiple times um, in the classroom. I've given it to my own family and friends and have just, you know, shared it far and wide. And um, the cool thing is that I get to wake up to post and I get to, you know, see kids use this book um, for character day at their school. And um, it's just kind of a special moment and special thing for me to see that, you know, the message that um, is being shared it's really sticking with some of the girls. They're they're gaining this confidence and they're they're understanding that you know they're very they're special and that um, they're needed in this world just as they are. Definitely, that's great. That's great. Um, so when you go out and you speak, uh, what kind of messages do you give off outside of um, just educating people on these books? What else do you speak about? Yeah, so when I'm in the classroom or uh, I do a lot of speaking engagements um, in schools and community organizations specifically. Um, and so within those, I'm just making sure that we talk a lot about acceptance. So we talk about acceptance of, you know, just anyone and everyone. Um, and we also talk about self-acceptance from, of course, from Brown Girl Book. Um, but the biggest thing with kids or even with just individuals that you know they may hire me to to come to an organization or whatnot is we talk about a lot about acceptance and um through those books i've been able to to share that message and um, i'm hoping that it's going to be something that individuals all across can be able to to take something from it It doesn't have to necessarily be a kid you don't necessarily have to be black to be able to receive it um but just making sure you're accepting people for for who they are um because as you can see, a lot of things are going on in the world today, and we have to know who people are and um, go off of that. True, true. I know you do a lot of outreach and a lot of things in your community with the church. Um, do you do mentorship as well? Um, yeah, I have some mentoring opportunities that I have had the opportunities to be a part of. Um, my church, I attend a church in uh, Spartanburg. Um, it's called New Life of Excellence and very, very awesome church. And so we are able to partner with individuals um, in the community. Um, I think some things with, you know, related to education, but me personally, um, I have, you know, volunteered my time with some organizations in the community. And I think that mentorship is a big thing, especially for um, individuals who have made it and who are still making it. It's, it's a very, very important for us to reach back and to help others that um, want to be in the same shoes that we're in where we are today. So I think mentorship is um, very, very important, very key. Mentorship is. Um, I want to roll that say I didn't have a mentor growing up, um, but I will say that I was blessed to meet a whole lot of different leaders on my path to where I'm at. And I was able to, to have those good conversations with them and pull some of the, the, the traits that I see that they had that made them great and try to incorporate that in myself. So I can definitely see you guys going out with the church and the community, going out talking to the kids, how they can look at you guys, feel accepted and start pulling some of those great traits from you guys, you know? Yeah, and I like that you um, you've talked a lot about leadership. Um, that's ne definitely another focus for um, in the classroom, or whether it be organizations, um, being able to possess leadership skills, whether it be in the workplace, in the classroom, um, that's something that everyone needs. And when we're able to realize that we are a leader, you know, some of our decision making changes, some of our habits change. Um, so I definitely make sure that if I am talking to students or I am, you know, in an environment where, you know, kids have the ability to see me and they respect me as a leader, um, I want to be able to make sure that I pass those same things off to them because, you know, we're going to go old, we're going to get old one day. And these are the people that have to either raise us or be the people that are contributing to society more. So definitely have to pass that baton, but it starts with leadership, mentorship. So they can see that. Definitely. So like, 
empowered leaders empower leaders so going out there talking to the youth educating them making them feel accepted making them let them letting them know that this is how the world view you but this is not who you are you know you are better than this you are bigger than this you know what i'm saying you have to dream bigger than the circumstances that you currently are in yo once you embed those great qualities into the into the youth into the kids they got no other choice but to grow up and be something positive, be a great influencer, be a great leader. You know, you just got to give them those traits, that that confidence, that backing, and that's all they need to become what they need to become. Absolutely, and I think that when your you, your dreams get bigger, you know, you have less less worries. You know, I mean, this is this is this is what we got, right? I mean, <laughs> less worries. Definitely. You see it. You see it. Yeah. <laughs> Less worries. And so um, I think that there are going to be a lot of things that we're going to have to endure, a lot of things that we're going to have to go through. Um, but I think we have to all accept the call and realize, hey, I know that this isn't going to get any better. But if I value, if I view myself as a leader, I have to step up into this role. You know, I have to be this person that that makes this change. We really want to get, um, you know, change in our communities, change in our areas. So we have to do what it takes and, and take whatever, you know, information that we've learned and not only use it for ourselves to make things better, but to teach other people after us how to also do the same thing. So, so it sounds like you're really doing a lot with the youth of mentoring, um, leader, leading them, doing outreach. So where do you see your brain going from here? Do you see yourself writing more books? Do you, self, do you see yourself doing more uh, speaking engagements? I really want to do some more books. So I'm working with um, some picture book groups right now. And um, I'm just making sure that I open myself up to all types of possibilities. Um, but for now, definitely working on some manuscripts, um, some books that I want to write, and hopefully getting those out soon. So that's what's in the works now. I would love to um, just expand that and grow that. I have a passion for books. I have a passion for literacy, because um, growing up, there weren't many books that I was able to read that had a girl that looked like me or I had a boy that, you know, was the same color as me. So um, having those books is very important. Um, and I want kids that look like us to have, you know, a library of their own at their home with books that, that are specific to them that they like. So I think within this time, of course, starting the conversation, um, I would definitely love for my brand to, um, you know, have, I want to have more books, I want to have more conversations, would love to continue speaking um, and just kind of getting the word out that, you know, books are important, these conversations are important, um, so that parents and families and teachers can um, definitely help with this process. That's good. That's good. And definitely um, one thing that kids really need to see is themselves in the position that they want to be in. You know what I'm saying? So as a kid, if you can see a black pharmacist, you know that is obtainable. You see a black writer, a black speaker, you're like, oh, if that person can do it, I know I can do it. And right. putting it in the books makes it last and live on forever because those books are going to be here long after we're gone. So that's def cool. definitely one good thing that you're doing, passing that knowledge down, you know? Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. So let the people know how they can get in contact with you, your IG, uh, your Facebook, just in case they want to order a book, your website, let them know. Yeah, well, feel free to follow me. Uh, I am on all social media outlets, um, on Facebook at Daphne Glenn Speaks, um, Instagram, just Daphne Glenn. Um, and then if you would like to purchase a book, um, there are two ways that you can purchase. You can purchase on my website personally. Um, and those can be, you can have books that are signed there. It's DaphneGlenn.com. And you can also find the books on Amazon. And you just have to search Brown Boy Book, Daphne Glenn, or Brown Girl Book, Daphne Glenn, respectively. That's what's up. That's what's up. Thank you for coming in, having this conversation with us, letting us know how you're making a positive impact in your community. This is Dr. Bar 2 on Pill Talk. You can find me on Instagram and YouTube at Dr. Bar 2. Thank you.